What's going on guys, it's Tom or Top 10 Wrestling and welcome back to another video on the channel. In the past I have reviewed the first ever TNA pay-per-view. So today we're going to be reviewing the first ever TNA Impact episode from 2004. But basically this video is going to be a little different, you might have just heard a Discord notification, sorry. But this video is going to be a little different because this is a highlight from my podcast that I started with two of my friends. And basically, we just talk about the TNA episode. It's basically the same as any other video you'd see on this channel, except there's three of us talking about TNA, and it's not cut up and edited the same kind of way. But it's me talking about TNA the same way I always do. And yeah, please do subscribe to the channel for the podcast. It is called Shoots and Jobbers. Link is in the description. And if you want to watch the full episode or listen to the full episode, the link to the description for that for the Spotify page. But yeah, subscribe with notifications on. I'm trying to hit 200k. And yeah, let's get into it. Do you want to wrap things up with the TNA review? Yeah, sorry, I've been rambling on for way too long now. All good, way all good. But anyway, um, so we all watched the first ever TNA episode. Uh, obviously, me being a TNA YouTuber, I think we want to do like a weekly TNA segment so that I can post to my channel, help promote the podcast, etc, yeah. etc. And this... Um, so we, we thought an interesting one to do would be to watch the first ever TNA episode. Um, this took place in 2004. It is live from Universal Studios uh, in the place that would future become known as the Impact Zone. Uh, Fox Sports Net is the TV channel that's broadcast on. This was a year before they got their Spike deal, which is the TV deal there that is synonymous with and kind of became famous from. Uh, and up until this point, TNA had been broadcasting weekly pay-per-views for about two years and uh, they're still doing that but they finally had an actual tv deal uh, there, were, there was no knockouts division at this time they were still partnered with the nwa so they only they were using the nwa belts there's a lot of talent on here who in the future yeah. would go on to become great yeah uh, like but anyway we open with a like... six we open with a six-man tag team canada are out first and that is pete williams eric young and bobby rude eric young uh, that's what eric that's what he had, he had hair he had hair in yeah, his. Blonde hair, yeah. <laughs> and they were against Team International, who's Amazing Red, Sanjay Dutt, and Hector Garza, who's part of that famous family, and he's the uncle of current WWE wrestlers Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo. Oh, are they related? No way. Yeah, I don't know yeah. that. Yeah. Bruh. Uh, but everyone, we started this match, lots of high-flying stuff, sentons from everyone, yeah. very fast-paced at times. Uh, Bobby Roode looks very different in this match, which is like the yes, first thing. he does, yeah. I noticed um, Sanjay Dutt at one point did like a flip into a Hurricane Rana. They got Don West on commentary going crazy. <laughs> uh, they all start hitting the finishes. Amazing Red hits the Code Red on Eric Young. Then Peter Williams hits Destroyer on, Code, on um, Amazing Red before it was the most overused move of all time. <laughs> and... Yeah, ultimately, Hector Garza hits Bobby Roode with a twisting moonsault to get the win for Team International. So this was a good match, this. I was quite surprised that they uh, they gave the dub to the international team because, they, knowing an American company, they love to yeah. be on top. Anyway, for our next match, we have Shark Boy, and he's against Abyss. So he is about to be destroyed, Shark Boy is. <laughs> he's about to die. These are two of my favorite TNA wrestlers here, uh, and Abyss has one of my t favorite like TNA theme songs of all time. And this is when Abyss like wasn't talking at all; he was a silent monster, which <laughs> was a very interesting time. Obviously, as the years went on, he'd start talking, get more of a character. Uh, but yeah, Abyss dominates his match, gets the win with a black hole slam, which is a great move. And afterwards, a guy dressed as Popeye comes down. Oh, Abyss. that was this weird. Was so I had stupid. no idea what was going on there. Well, basically, it was, a, it was a plug for Universal Studios because there's like a Popeye ride and like area in there, which I've actually been to. Uh, it's pretty cool. I went, they, I went like on the River Rapids ride. It's pretty fun. Um, I'm rambling. But the next match, uh, well, first of all, what do you guys think of Abyss and Shark Boy in general? Abyss, Abyss is just so cool, man. I just love seeing yeah. him. He was just such yeah, a this good is great. monster. I love the fact that they... They didn't hesitate about a good old squash match. No, yeah, yeah, it, 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 he had, he did have like there, there was some hope, which is is always good to see, 
David versus Goliath, but Shark Boy, he, he's a novelty. He, he is a, he's one of them novelty sort of wrestlers. Yeah, he's a so, Shark Boy is probably like my favorite jobber of all time. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. He went through a gimmick at one point where he just he was Lava Girl, Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> and it was all like unbelievably over. Like you wouldn't Brilliant. you wouldn't imagine how over he got from doing that. <laughs> That's, that's anyway, for the next match, we have James Storm and Chris Harris. This is for the NWA tag titles, by the way. America's Most Wanted, James Storm and Chris Harris challenging Kid Cash and Dallas. Dallas, you might know as Lance Archer in AEW today. Yep. I remember that. Yeah. I saw that, actually. And they're nice. the champions. James Storm, obviously, would go on to become uh, Beer Money with Bobby Roode, one of TNA's best tag teams. I love uh, He'd win the world money. title. Chris Harris was always the guy that, when you looked at America's Most Wanted, many people thought Chris Harris would be the guy to become the star, but not at all. Uh, he went to WWE where he was Braden Walker, if you remember this. I don't. Knock, no. knock, who's there? Braden Walker, and I'm going to knock your brains out. Um, <laughs> an emb- a pretty embarrassing run for him that really killed his popularity. Uh, but yeah, uh, America's Most Wanted are a brilliant team. Probably the best in the company at the time. And uh, they win this match. Um, Harris rolls up cash to win the titles for America's yeah. Most Wanted. The one thing I did not like about the ending of that match was the roll-up. I think you should never, ever, unless unless it's something that makes sense, you should never win by a roll-up in a, ma- in, in a, ta- in a title match. Sorry. That that was the one yeah. thing that unless it was like a hell of a cool roll up, but no, I'm pretty sure it was. Tell that to the twenty four seven title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the title breeds. Yeah, overall that um the match was pretty good, I yeah. thought. It was cool to see Lance Archer. I didn't realise he was Dallas. Like the second Dallas came out I was like, he looks familiar and it's Lance Archer, who was obviously brilliant. But yeah, America's most wanted to get the win. They're going to have some great matches with the title. They were a brilliant tag team, like I said. Yeah, Next up, we off. have an appearance from Dusty Rhodes, and he's being interviewed by Mike Tenay. He hypes up TNA, puts them over. He starts dissing Jeff Jarrett, who had just won the world title at their last pay-per-view. Jarrett interrupts him. They start mouthing off. Jarrett beats up Dusty Rhodes, which cues our truth to come out and make the save. It's brill- that was which was brilliant. awesome to see him. Uh, he was a star in TNA R Truth Awards. He was a world champion there, uh, if you didn't know. He, uh, he tries to make the save, but Jarrett smashes him with a guitar, yes. which is a spot that I have always loved. I think it's about as good, yeah. Yeah, you can't, can't see have R Truth just like getting them. Yes! I never, you know, I never realised, like, I've, I was never sort of a person who watched Impact or any TNA. I did not realise that R Truth was ex. I've always watched WWE, like, when I've just seen on in the yeah. background. I've always seen our truth on, on WWE, and that that's that's mad. That's brilliant. Yeah, he was obviously he was Ron the Truth Killings, uh, obviously yeah. being his real name. Yeah. Uh, so that's where our truth the name came from. Yeah. But yeah, he was great in TNA. He had some really fun stuff going on there. And we next have an interview with Vince Russo. Oh, yes, shit. the real Vince Russo, who was working for Creative in TNA. He was an on-screen authority figure at this time as well. And he's hyping up the next match, which is a four-way normal contenders match for the X Division title. Uh, three of the men have already been revealed, but the fourth man is a mystery. And the three men are already in the ring. It's Michael Shane, Chris Sabin, and primetime Elix Skipper. They're all awaiting the fourth man, and it is the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Yes. Oh, yes. He is making his return to the X Division after wrestling in the world title scene. AJ was the first ever X Division champion, and he's going back to his roots. How, that, so, was, yeah. that was that was such a good match. I really enjoyed that one. It's a, it, it, it's mad. His men are very good. Yeah, um, it's Michael Shane. I believe he spent like his whole career in TNA, uh, but Chris Sabin, he was a member of the Motor City Machine Guns with Alex Shelley, a great tag team. Uh, right. Sabin was a multi-time X Division champion, and he was a world champion at one point, but he had a pretty awful reign. Uh, Elix Skipper, he wrestled in WCW a bit, and him and Christopher Daniels had a cage match with America's Most Wanted, the team we mentioned earlier, 
in an unreal match, which saw one of TNA's most famous high spots where Elix Skipper tightrope walks the top of a cage. Oh, no, no, no. A Hurricane Rada on someone. Oh, I thought you were going to mention this spot. Was it with Christopher Daniels when he like lands vertically on his head? Do you that know? Was <laughs> Daniels and suicide. Yeah. In, oh in my gosh! X. I did, I thought you were, first. I literally thought you were going to mention it, and I was like, no, no, please don't. No, because no, I, I, Skipper, he basically tightrope walked the cage and hit a hurricane rana on Bobby Roode, who was sitting on the oh. top of the cage oh. into the ring. It was unreal. But yeah, not Danger. much to say about this match other than it being really good. I mean, AJ in two thousand and four was unreal, was brilliant. Yeah, like he would obviously go on to become TNA's biggest star, multi-time world champion, tag champion, best TNA wrestler of all time. I'd say. And 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 probably the best wrestler of all time. He was he was wrestler. Ooh. He was voted a uh, wrestler of the Ooh. decade, wasn't he? Styles. Oh, Pretty sure. Yeah, I did was. see that. To be fair. And I think Styles is he, he is brilliant. And I think I mean, he's, he's had success in every major company. I mean, exactly. TNA, Ring of Honor, New Japan, he's, WWE. Like he's done the AW, no. <laughs> His boys AW are there now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, towards the finish of the match, Elix Skipper did something similar to the spot I mentioned before. He tight roped the ropes yeah. and hurricane ranted Shane, who was sitting on the ropes because he like, got placed there, and he hurricane ranted him out of the ring, which was a pretty that, unreal that spot. Was, that was a good spot. Yeah, but AJ, of course, gets the win with the Stars Clash on Michael Shane. He's a normal contender for Kaz, who is the X Division champion, which is another there awesome we go. Kaz. Yeah. Obviously, Frank Kazarian in AEW today. You know, I, I, I thought it was a very good sort of first episode for TNA. Obviously, it's not Impact, but it was, it was yeah. a good sort of debut show. Like, I think AEW's first sort of pay-per-view was good, but I think we should definitely take a look at TNA's first pay-per-view as well after that um, the um, what am I saying yeah TNA I have TNA is... watched the first TNA I've done a video on the first TNA pay-per-view it's a yeah. very weird watch okay. to say the least okay Interesting. well it's I'll be first I'll... Show. it's just a lot of like former WWE jobbers and stuff there <laughs> Um, it's a weird one. But, well, I yeah. think I'll be intrigued to see what uh, what 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 we did what what we did dive dive what we dive deep into next week for next TNA because yeah, overall, th- uh, I, what do you guys think of the show overall? Then the the TNA show. Yeah, this one. What do you think uh, of it overall? Yeah, overall, overall, as I said, it was pretty good. It was a. Uh, it was for our first episode. I think it was pretty good. They had a lot of interesting, did a lot of interesting stuff. Like I think some stuff that TNA have always had that has been very interesting and quite unique to the rest of the industry is six sided ring. I always enjoy it. I think it's, it adds a very unique element. It's very cool. Uh, the X division was just, I love the X division. They had yes. some really good yeah. ideas. X division was always a character. shining light in TNA. I thought. Yeah, and this, and you can see it from the first episode. They had this stuff there. They had the X division right there. You know, it was always a stable. And it's, I just think they had a lot of good, good ideas, and it was great to see them. I think Sean sort of covered what I was sort of like going to say, but I think it is a shame that TNA didn't sort of get get as much hype around it as other companies, oh, yeah. just because it didn't have a multi billionaire owner. Um, yeah, and I think that they had, they did have the stars of the future. Like, uh, and I think it, it it will be interesting to see how other companies sort of, of take this approach in the future when it comes to sort of starting up a new a new show. Like, we we don't know, like, 10 years' time, we could see something completely new from uh, from another rival company. So, yeah, I think, like, it, yeah. it, it was a very good first show. Yeah, I thought overall, really good. Uh, if this was, like, a week, if every show, like, weekly was this quality it would be great but obviously tna would start to go very downhill um sooner rather than later um but yeah really good first showing from the company i mean really set the tone for the x division who was which was always a great part of tna uh aj was brilliant i thought he already stood out on the show as did chris harris and james storm and i thought all the guys in like the opening six man specifically amazing red i thought were brilliant in that opening match but yeah, that was it for the TNA review. Well, thank you very much, Tom. We appreciate it as always, man. No worries, no worries. 